Vaatje. We're doing our Folklore Friday video today on a very, very important site in Ireland called Hill of Tara, which I'm sure plenty of you have heard of. And the reason that I'm looking at the Hill of Tara is because I wanted to actually do a kind of a little series through on um, various of the sacred sites of Ireland. So I am doing a class on the Royal Sites of Ireland, which is next Sunday, um, if you're watching this as it goes out. So it's Sunday the 31st uh, will be the live class. But if you're watching this after that, you can catch it on the recorded version at the Irish Pagan School and the link for it will be down below. So if you are interested in more on the sacred sites of Ireland, especially the really important royal sites from each province, then that is the class for you. But meanwhile, we are going to have a look at the Hill of Tara. And I'm going to share my screen here and you will see that we are on duchas.ie as usual. And this really is an amazing site. So if you're just joining us for the first time, definitely go in and play around in this website. But we are going to, and I'll put a link to the search below, but we're actually going to look at the, um, we get three, 34 transcripts that come up. So we're going to go with just the Mead ones for now. The Hill of Tara is very popular all through the country, of course. And I just wanted to kind of take a little browse through some of them because they're, they're kind of cool. So um, this is one of my favorite ones, actually. And this one talks about uh, hidden treasure. And a lot of them actually talk about hidden treasure around Tara and gold connected to Tara and all the rest of it. So I'm just going to look at this. But um, I like this because it's the Ark of the Covenant it mentions. So I'm going to read off the screen here. In the Emerald Hill of Tara, about two miles from Kilmessen, and Kilmessen is the school that this was recorded in, so that's why it's referenced there, the Ark of the Covenant is supposed to be buried. It has never been known by whom it was put there. In olden times, this was a very sacred vessel, and it's believed by some people that a golden altar is buried beside it. It was hidden there about 1800 years ago in order that the king or some other person, next page, next page, some other person in authority would not demand it. Mr. Briscoe of Bellinter made two attempts to find it, but he failed. His trouble was not lost. During his investigations, he found a precious stone. It is believed that it will be an innocent boy who will find the ark. Six candles in golden candlesticks at certain times were seen lighted on Tara Hill. It is said that these are the candles on the golden altar. It's really interesting stuff that kind of like goes along with um, all this hidden treasure at Tara and, you know, sacred and religious artifacts and lights on the hill and all that kind of stuff. So there's another one here about Danish people buried the gold. So that's the Vikings. Um, I can skip that one. Um, I like this one, the uh, local monuments. So this one is from Kilberry in County Meath, which is near enough, I suppose, local. And it says there is a stone. Uh, I'm going to read. Yeah, there is a stone at the Stone Cross near Oristown. St. Patrick carried the stone from the Hill of Tara and hid his boots under it. And when he came back, the boots were stolen. And he cursed Oristown and said that every year something like that would happen. The mark of his shoulder is on the stone yet. So if you know anybody in Oristown in County Meath, um, I'm wondering, I can't help but wonder, are they still cursed? And does somebody get their boots stolen every single year? And this one then, an old story. So this is where we get into mythology and Fionn McCool. So long ago, there lived a great giant named Fionn McCool. He was so strong and powerful that he could throw any weight a far distance. He is supposed to throw the three huge stones that are at the crossroads of Greenanstown from the Hill of Tara. There is a story told of how another giant from Scotland who had come to fight with Fionn called at his house and Fionn's mother answered his call. He asked if Fionn was inside, but she said that he was out hunting and that his son, who was about a year old, was inside. The giant went in to see the baby and he, 
he said that he was a fine baby for his age, not knowing it was Fionn himself. The giant asked her what Fionn usually ate when he was at home, and she said plenty of griddle bread. She knew that the giant was coming, so she had a cake of bread made with a griddle in the centre of it. Griddle is like the pan that you cook bread on usually. And when he came across the griddle in the bread, he broke all of his teeth. After a while, he asked what Fionn usually worked at when he was at home. So she brought him out and showed him a large stone. And she said that he throws that stone across the house and runs around to the other side to catch it before it reaches the ground. With this information, he returned home and did not come to see Fionn again. So I heard that story actually in school back way, 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 way back. And I always loved it because it was actually Fionn's wife, I think I heard the version of it. And um, yeah, the uh, I just love the idea of like the clever woman outsmarting the big giant from Scotland. But you know, that's my personal. Okay. And then, that's an interesting one actually, we don't, we don't need to click in on it, uh, local place names. There are many old famous places near my home in Tri Tribly. It is said that there was once an underground road from Bechtav Abbey to the Hill of Tara, but this road which goes under the Boyne is broken down in three places. One place is convenient to the Ballanter golf links. There is also an old house in the village of Bechtav known as the Big House. It is said that no roof would last on it, I think it's that one. Um, those kind of like underground road stories are very, very common. And I often wonder, like they're very common around the sacred sites particularly, and I often wonder about, like, are they a folk memory of ancient routeways through the countryside that connected the major sites? And, you know, that they became these kind of hidden roads or underground roads when people were talking about them and still placed importance on them, but there was no kind of visible or physical sign of them so that would be my work in theory on this whole underground road thing and there is there are connections between the different sacred sites but uh, we go into more of that in the class that we're going to teach next week so if you're interested then do have a look at that and like and subscribe and if you join the mailing list you will get an email about these videos whenever they come out and you can subscribe here on the channel and uh yeah, we will be back here. I'm trying currently to do, let's stop this share, sorry. I'm trying currently to do videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So that's where we're going with the channel at present. We'll see how it goes. But uh, do subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. And if you have anything that you'd like me to talk about or any questions you want answered, because I'd like to do that maybe on a Wednesday, then um, comment below or send me an email through the mailing list at lauraobrien.ie and you can join up the mailing list and you get loads of free resources and all sorts of cool stuff coming in through your email that will authentically connect you to Ireland. So it's long before, catch you in the next video.